Awesome, please you say a name or name, your name and where did you born? Then you answer the question. The question is about your family. How much you speak is better, how much more you speak is better. Please don't okay. hurt you of your mother and father. Education and professions of your parents, I mean mother and father and sister. And uh, education or, and profession of your sisters and brothers. Then I will come to the sad or uh, nice memories, but I, I will ask it. So talk about your family, but please start from your name and birth place. Okay, my name is Chantel Cummings, and um, my my mar that's my maiden name. My married name is Noir Alfeth, Chantel Noir Alfeth. Um, I was born and raised here in Southern California. Um, lived here my whole life. <laughs> a little bit boring. Um, my father is retired now. He was a um, construction, uh, I don't know what you call it, he built the houses and um, he actually built most of the city of Carson, uh, him and his father. That was their profession. They built Carson, Harbor City, many of the apartments uh, down the street they built. So this was his profession and he lives in Northern California now and he's retired. Uh, my mother has done uh, <laughs> millions of different professions, <laughs> everything you can think of, but right now she does, um, how do you call it, like home health. She, she takes care of, um, I have a brother who's handicapped and he lives at home with her. He's 33 and she takes care of him. And this is like a nurse, she's like a nurse. And um, so this is her full-time job, taking care of him. And... Where they were from? Where are my parents from? From here. My, my father was born and raised in Carson. He went to Carson High, um, and he's Catholic. He went to St. Philomena Church in Carson. His family, the, and my, on my dad's side, grandparents lived in Carson. Um, I'm not exactly sure where they came from originally. I believe their, uh, my grandfather is Dutch and German, I think, or Dutch and French. I'm, I'm actually not sure. That's pretty bad, I don't remember, but. And my mom's um, family basically are from here. My great-grandmother came from Texas. I know that. And um, I don't remember, though, what mix. Everybody's very mixed as far as background. We don't have any one or two um, ethnicities. We're really blended. And uh, could you talk about uh, your brothers and sisters and the relations of father and mother? If they were teaching you what they were teaching Yeah, my parents were very young, very, very young. They were married, um, my father was 18 and my mother was 16 when they got married. And um, so they, you know, they were very young. My father was raised Catholic. My mom um, didn't really follow any particular faith. Now, my great-grandmother, who was my mom's grandmother, so this is fourth generation up, she actually, um, helped raise me a lot when I was very small. And she was Baptist, very, very devout ba Baptist, which is a branch of Christianity. And so when I was little, I went to Sunday school every weekend. Um, I grew up with the children's Bible. I actually still have the children's Bible that I, when I was little, that I grew up with. Um, she put me in private school at one point, I went in fourth grade. I went to a, a Baptist private school and um, so that was mostly the only religion I was exposed to was through great grandma. Um, my dad didn't really follow. I mean, he was, uh, what did they do that? Communion or all of the, you know, the things they do in the Catholic Church. I don't really know all of it, but he did all of that. But he never talked to me about it. He never, I never saw him go to church ever. So um, just great grandma, Nana, we called her Nana. She was the one that was really the only religious person in the family. Um, and then my brothers, I have two brothers. Um, one, my mother was married twice. Her first husband was my, my father. And so I have a brother who's a year younger than me. And um, he lives now, he's a contractor. He learned the trade from my dad. And so he does the same thing, builds houses. And uh, he lives in Colorado. My whole family's in Colorado. I'm pretty much here by myself, just my, my kids. So um, they're all there. And my other brother, as I said, is handicapped. He's uh, 10 years younger than me. He's from my mom's second marriage. And he's um, multiple handicapped. 
So those are my brothers. And I do have a half-sister that my father remarried and uh, has a daughter from his second marriage. And I don't really have any communication with her. She lives in Northern California and is pretty isolated. And um, unfortunately, um, a few times I've tried to make a connection with her, but it was very difficult. So, inshallah, someday I'll <laughs> that'll happen. But Sister, you said that you were going to the church. Really, we are not experienced about the church, the Turkish people. Uh, what you were doing? When the kids go to the church, what did they when um, I would go, the children in, the, in our church that my, my great-grandmother went to, it was very um, structured. The children actually didn't go into the main prayer area with the adults. We went to what they call Sunday school. So the adults would go in and, and listen to the preacher and do their thing, and the children would go into a special room with a teacher. And it was very fun. I remember it being a very pleasant time. We read stories, we colored. There were a lot of books to color the stories um, from the, old, mostly it was the, just the beginning of the, the Christian Bible stories, um, Noah and the ark, and we would color the, the animals and the boat. And it was this simple. They, they made it a very simple, the stories for us. And it was, nice. It was pleasant. I have very good memories of, of going there. Um, I didn't really understand it being anything, I don't know how to say this the right way, but I didn't get a concept of, of God at all. I just got a concept of stories, that we were being taught stories from a book, and I understood that. And it wasn't until I got a little older and I actually wanted to figure out what were these stories about why were we why were we learning this and i started reading the bible we had at home then i started oh this is actually people believe this <laughs> and 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 then then i really you know that's when i really started reading the the real bible and the more i read the more it just seemed like stories to me i i couldn't connect a religion a belief in a higher power with what i was reading it yeah you know you said very important points uh well, some of the Christians say with this, you know, uh, in Europe, they said that okay, there is some stories, good stories, story just story, but there is no, no, there is no explanation of God. They said that we couldn't find the God in in Christianity. There is no, there is something stupid, uh, tri how you say, Trinity and and others, but even spiritually, you cannot find the God. He said that uh, when I became the Muslim, I, I found the God. Yeah, I, almost you said same story, isn't it? You, you had some good stories, okay, from Noah and others, Ark, and, but you couldn't find the God. Yeah, th this was very important, what, what, what you said. Uh, what else do you want to say about this? I mean, because you said very important point of Christianity. There is no, I mean, explanation of uh, real God. And what uh, else we can say? Uh, for example, uh, in the church, children church, uh, you, they make, they give you some uh, pains and other things to have good times, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you have some memories from that period? Just, just that I was very young. I was very young. I went to Sunday school from, I think, maybe five years old until eight or nine years old. And then um, my mother got a divorce from my, her, my father. And then she remarried. And when she remarried, this husband did not like the relationship um, between my great grandmother and and anybody, he wanted to take my mother and my brother and my take us away from her. He didn't like like her having any uh, influence in our life. He wanted to be the boss and the control, and so he took us away. So I stopped going. This is when I st I stopped going. I didn't go to the private school anymore, and I, st I stopped all of that. So um, that's pretty much when my religious training finished when I was very young, nine, eight or nine years old. And I was on my own after that too. You, so you don't remember any memory? Good or Just very, uh, I, I actually have a problem with my memory. I have a medical problem that affects my memory. So I don't have a lot of memories of that time. Just, just singing and songs and... You were singing? Uh, yeah, we used to sing. We had, a, the children would sing. And then when I went to private school, I was in the choir. They had a choir and we made a record actually and uh, of religious songs. I just, you know, it was very pleasant. I, 
I don't have any bad memories of, of that time. But again, uh, there was nothing that made a connection. I honestly didn't know what God was. I knew they talked about it, but it didn't make any connection to me at all. I had no, I knew my prayers, I knew how to pray. And if I would get afraid of the dark or something, I would say the prayer because that's what my great grandmother told me to do. But I didn't know what I was, was I speaking to what? I didn't know, no. I would say it more like you would. I, I don't I don't know, but I didn't make a connection to any power or any any creator. I had no concept of that. I got it. Uh, what's the meaning of the prey you were saying in the darkness or something? She said if I was feeling scared that you, you say a prayer and that God protects you. But I didn't get what she meant God. What, you know, what is that, like a ghost or, I, I, I had no idea. I, I had the picture in the book of of a person with a beard and a white dress and the gold all around him on a, on a big chair. This is what I saw. And I thought, no. And my mind didn't accept that. But I would do it anyway because since little, this is what I was taught, you know, to, to say these prayers. So I would do it. I knew it was a good thing. It wasn't bad to say a prayer. But I didn't understand why. Did the picture, uh, the picture was the, the picture of the priest? No, God. We had pictures of God. No. Yeah, it's when we were little. Not Jesus, no. Jesus was different. Jesus had brown hair. Jesus had brown hair, and Jesus was in a, in a different kind of thing. They, they would give us a, a, a representation. It was in the color books. And, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, I mean, we had an image of what was God. Yeah, really. A man, it was a white man, too, which is funny, because Jesus is brown, but God was white. So, I... I don't know. This, I mean, I was little, very little, and this this church is no longer there anymore. The school that I went to is gone. They're not there anymore. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I started a little with Christianity. I read the Bible and, uh, to have cultural difference. Right. Yeah, but what I I remember the pictures from the Jesus. Even yeah, you said that there were some pictures, but I, I thought that all the pictures belongs to the. the the, to the Jesus, but you see, you are right because I saw some pictures with golden lights around. That's the God. Huh? I don't know when. I, I think this was just for the kids. Uh -huh. I don't think this is anything that the uh, the adult. I've never seen it since. Just in Sunday school and just in the color books, the the books that we would you know color for. I think it was to give children an idea of an important bigger than everybody to try to give us some idea in our mind of what was a god, what was god and this was what they did you know sister of course this is the this is not a theory i think this is the way also i study Anson times uh history and also i study study not in the school as a script writer i read but as far as i noticed that uh, the christianity moved uh, the culture of the ancient period, you know, because in the ancient uh, history, you can describe to the god Zeus. This is the figure strongly, and this is Eros, is lawful, and etc. You know, Poseidon is is the god of the seas, mm -hmm. for example. So I believe that all these things, all mistakes, is is carried from the ancient time period. They said that yes, the, the Roman Empire said this is the correct but no. They, 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 they carry, they, how you say, the shapes looks like something from God, but uh, what's containing is, is, is this one. So what you said, I just remember me this, you know, they described to God how it's possible. Yes. How the Creator, uh, well, yeah, this is interesting. Inshallah, after that, you come to this point when you uh, try to express something about Islam, then please you compare with this subject. This is important. But let's finish your keyboard. Uh, then, <clears throat> do you have any bad or nice or sad memories from your father and mother, from your kidneys? You know, not not really. When I went, even when they got divorced, um, I didn't really know. I just knew they didn't live together anymore. Um, I think because I spent a lot of time with my great grandmother, so I was moving around. You know, I'd go home a few days and go to Nana's house and. I had my cousins with me, my little cousins, and I just, it was good. And when I, when they got divorced, actually, things got uh, better with my father because he would take me on the weekend 
and his parents owned um, like a ranch in the mountains. They had property in the mountains. Oh, it was so beautiful up there, and I loved going up there. And we would just, they had little bikes for the dirt, and we would have all this fun time up there, and it, I just loved being in nature. And I, so I had a really, I don't remember anything bad. A lot of people, they suffer when their parents divorce. With me, it was better. The only thing is my mother, second husband, that was very bad. He, he got a problem with drugs and he went very crazy. And he made our life very difficult for many years. And um, that's a very big, ugly, long story. That, but it had a big effect on me. It, it showed me very young the danger of drugs and what they do to people because he was a very sweet man before he started the drugs. He was generous, he was kind, he did a lot for us, bought us a house, he, he did many really wonderful things and the drugs took away his mind and made him crazy where he was trying to kill us. Really, he went to jail for doing horrible things and he ended up dying because of the drugs. But um, it showed me, you know, and that was uh, from 11 until 14 years old, so it's, um, it's an important time in, uh, in the life of a child. It's when you develop a lot. And so by the time I hit high school, I knew for sure that I never wanted to even try drugs because I saw what they did to people and uh, there was no way. So it was, it was important. It was a good lesson for me. Sister, uh, it's strange. In Islamic countries, I have a lot of Islamic countries, but Alhamdulillah, the divorce is not so common. But here in the USA, and even in, in America, and in European countries, divorce is very usual, and I believe that this is, this is, this is not uh, good for the society. You know? In the future, you cannot imagine how to destroy the kids. Because kids, when you destroy the kids, they will be, they will be uh, the adults of the tomorrow. So this will continue. You know? Why, why is it happening in the world? I think the biggest reason that, that with for divorce is that people, people in, in other parts of this, especially growing up, they're not, they don't stick to things, when I say stick to things, they don't, they don't stick to things, they don't, uh, there are some people that work very hard, they do work very hard, and those are the people that, you know, you're, you, you probably see them stay married, but a lot of people just quit, they just, they just give up and they quit because it's easier. A lot of people prefer to take the easier way. It's easier. It's much easier to walk out a door than to sit and try to understand why somebody's upset with you. It's much easier to tell your child, go to your room, than to sit and try to figure out why they just broke the what they did. You know, uh, why? Were you angry with me? Get them to talk. And this this child that just broke that, and now you're telling them go to their room, they're never gonna learn the skill of to express, to explain, to make themselves understood. And this, this, this is here, how it is here. I don't know in other countries, but in this country, kids, it's because I told you. I'm the mom, I'm the dad, I'm the boss, I'm the teacher. You do what I say, this is the rule. And they learn very young, okay, I'll just shut my mouth and I'll just go and I will do something when she's not looking. You know, okay, I'll, I'll go to school. I hate the school. They're mean to me. And then what happens? A kid gets a gun and goes and kills the people in the school. I mean, I could go on on this subject forever. But a big part is, as children, especially in this country, they are not tr trained or shown how to have a social skills, how to, not just social skills, but how to express and to be uh, understood in the right way. So this is why you see gangs and you see girls that are half naked and you see boys that, you know, have spikes through their face and all, all this stuff going on because they're trying to express what they were never able to, to learn as children. And then they grow up and they have to be married to somebody. They, they can't talk to their friends. They can't, they don't know how to have communication, real communication. So they get with someone that they like, they think is pretty or whatever, they get married and you know, the, then the first time there's some real problem, they can't work it out. They don't have the skills. And I mean, I think that's the big problem. I think that's the problem with, with the whole world. But I mean, for marriage specifically, if you, if you don't have the skills, how, how do you communicate? How do you, and then, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, 
if you have a different culture, a different uh, nationality, whew, then it gets really difficult because you have to deal with all that. But basically, I think it's that people just don't, they give up. It's, it's, too, it's too hard. It's much easier. There's somebody else right there. The, the, the availability, the, the ease of getting a divorce here, you know, you don't need a lawyer, you don't need money, you can go down. If you don't have money, you don't even have to pay to get the divorce. You can sign a paper, I don't have money, and the, they give you, they get, so it's so easy, it's nothing, it's nothing. You know what I think also, this is, the, this is the relation between the religion, you know. You know, according to me, if the people are spiritually, I mean, uh, religious people, oh, that's I, I think they can stand something. You know, sometimes the religion makes you power. If, if the people are religious, it means he's ready to deliver something for, for, for his God. So I think those people carry the marriage more, you know, because because, because uh, they, they don't want that lady suffer and kids suffer because he's ready to give something for Allah or God. I don't know, even in the other religions. In other religions, Christianity, I don't know this. Maybe, maybe you know the, better than me that the Christians, religious Christians, maybe they, they care more, their families. What do you think about this? Or all the same? I, you know, honestly, okay, I have to speak just from what I've seen in my experience. Um, mostly my exposure, my immediate exposure has been to the Catholic faith because my, um, I was married, my f first husband's a whole family was Catholic. And so that was my experience with Catholic people. There were a huge, huge family. Uh, I don't know, 90, 100 people just in this immediate area. There's so many. And what I saw though was that it didn't, it didn't really seem to matter. And there were a few of them that would attend church and that seemed to try to follow some kind of lifestyle. But in general, no. In general, I didn't find, and actually I haven't found, this is the, re this is the reason that, that I um, came to Islam. Because uh, through all the other faiths that I, that I looked at, and I, I studied a lot of them, I just couldn't find any where people actually lived they would preach it and they memorize it and you could talk with them and they could talk for hours about their beliefs but you never really saw it implemented in the life and back and back to what you said about marriage i mean i didn't even go into that subject because i would talk for seven days just on the subject of of having faith in a marriage because in in the usa a huge portion of people don't really have I mean, they say, oh, I'm Catholic, or I'm Christian, or I'm Jewish, or I'm this, I'm that. They say it like you would say, I am Swedish, or I am Dutch. They don't, doesn't mean this is their, their religion. They believe this like a, a, a spiritual way of life. It's just, well, my family, I mean, I, I guess if I was going to do that, I would say that I was a Baptist, because Grandma was a Baptist. But... They, they do that. Even Muslims. I, 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 <laughs> this is a big subject for me too. I, I know so many. But, but back to the, the marriage thing. The, there's, no, there's a huge void where people just don't, they don't have the faith and the, and the belief. And, you know, if they had that, then we wouldn't have divorce. I mean, really, because they wouldn't get married in the first place. They would be serious when they wouldn't just go get married. They would be thinking of it from a whole different point of view, not just looking at it like, oh, she's cute, let's get married, which is, I, I can't tell you how many people have told me, well, why did you get married? Well, I really like him, or I really like her. Oh, really? You know, I'm, there's no, yeah, the God doesn't enter the equation at all with most people, and especially here in this country. I, I just feel that I'm probably going to get someone telling me I'm wrong, but. Okay. We will come to the Islamic peoples in the other class, and that's why uh, yeah. uh, all of course is resolved. So, sister, let's come to uh, education. So, we, we go for, to your primary school, secondary school, high school, and university. Uh, um, even you say, where's the location, the name of the... Because uh, we will find from internet that school, and we will put pictures and others. Uh, so primary school you start. How I mean how was your school time passing? How was your teachers? What did you learn? What do you like? 
I don't really remember a lot about the the early early years of school. I, my parents were very young, like I said, and they moved a lot. Um, I mean, a lot. Like I would say, I went to a different school, maybe two different schools every year. Like I would start in one, and then four months later we would move. I would go to another one, and I'd, so I didn't. I didn't make any any friends. I didn't. Um, I don't even remember the names of, I remember one, President Avenue. I remember that school because it's right down the street. It's around the corner from here. And I ended up there two times, one at kindergarten, and then later we moved back, and then I ended up at the school again. But we moved so much, and then when my mother remarried the second time, I was living with my grandmother, for great-grandmother, for a little while, and so I stayed fifth grade, fourth grade, and any, I was in so many different schools, honestly. I, I, the only school that's clear in my memory is the Baptist school because um, just it was so different, the private school. Um, but, uh, and then when, I, when my mother divorced her second husband, um, we stayed. We finally got a place and we stayed. So for high school, high school was good. High school, I went to Redondo uh, Union High School in Redondo Beach. And, um, went there all four years and uh, in that school <laughs> you're not gonna believe this but <laughs> I was uh, what they call a heavy metaler <laughs> I was into heavy metal music and I was a strange person though because I didn't do the drugs and I didn't do the things that all of the other kids that were into that music did I just listened to the music I was going home every day and taking care of my sick brother. My brother was 10 years younger than me, so he was five, six years old at that time, and he has um, seizures, epilepsy, he has cerebral palsy, and he's um, developmentally delayed. He's like a baby, like four, five, three, four years old. And so my mom was working three jobs to support us, so I would come home from school, directly home, get my brother off the bus, feed him, cook dinner, clean the house, do my homework and mom would come home and you know we go to bed this was the life so I dressed that way if you saw pictures of me you would just freak out because the crazy hair and the clothes and the everything but even the our high school because there was a lot of kids that did bad things you know it's a high school this is America they, there's you know lots of groups of children they're doing bad things they're doing drugs they're leaving the school and they're not supposed to and so every high school has a, a small group of people. They're no one is supposed to know that they're the security, but they, they're like hiding, but they're there. I don't know, it's really silly. They knew me, and they knew that I'm not like these other kids. So if I was leaving school, they didn't ask me, where's your, your excuse or where's your paper? They'd know, oh, she's okay. She's not like the other ones. But anyway, so this was, but high school was good. I, I just, um, you know, I, I was uh, very in, in, into my studies. I was in the honors English, the very high level of English. Um, I was into theater. I liked to do um, the sound, like uh, recording the sound for when we would have musicals and plays. And um, I would run the big board with all the sound equipment. I would do that. Um, I learned all of the ways of movie making, like a spotlight, um, how to run, do the, the spotlight on the stage, just the behind, the things you do to set up the play. It was called stagecraft. We had a special class just to learn the, 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 how to do theater and that, this. I didn't like to be in front of the camera. I liked to be the one behind doing the thing. So I did this for four years. And uh, I was sure that was going to be my profession, that I was going to, to go to Long Beach, um, Cal State Long Beach, and go into the, the sound. I wanted to do sound technology and maybe work for, I don't know, uh, either a theater or move, go into movie production to sound. I was very into the sound. But um, anyway, so that was high school. And nothing uh, extremely remarkable, just normal. Do you have uh, nice or sad memories from high school? That you leave. It was good because I made friends. It was the first time in my life I stayed in one place so I could make friends. So I remember though, I remember feeling different than the other kids because like I said I was listening to this kind of music that most of the girls they were you know having relations with boys. 
that were doing drugs. I knew girls that were pregnant and getting pregnant in high school. Um, there was a lot of pressure from a lot of the, the big, not my, my close friends, but the circle, the bigger circle, to do these kind of things. Um, we would go to see bands play music, you know, go watch music and see bands play and everybody would be smoking and drinking and doing this and they would look at me like, why aren't you like that? Um, I didn't have boyfriends. I did, I, I felt weird though. I felt that there was something maybe wrong with me because I guess the way I, I, I conducted myself in high school did not attract. I, I didn't have, like the other girls were trying to get the attention and I, I, I wasn't. I would rather have the friends, just the friends. And, and I guess, I, I don't know, but it was difficult, a little difficult for me because I was different. I was not like them. And every, every girl I knew had a boyfriend. They were all, you know, like pairs everywhere. And I was the only one not like that. So, and I, I don't know. I just, I always felt a little strange because I didn't do the things everybody else did. And, um, I don't know. I guess I was more responsible too because of my brother. I, I didn't have time in my mind to, to waste the time with that, you know. And then I had to go to work at 16. I, I my mom was just struggling. It was very difficult. And she's got, you know, kids and she's alone. There's no child. She didn't get child support. She didn't get help. So I, you know, I, I was at an age where I wanted clothes. You know, I started to, you know, to want things, which we all get that way. And my mom told me I can't do it. And I wanted a jacket, a special jacket, because of the style of the music. I wanted this special kind of a leather jacket. And she said, I can't do it, I'm sorry. You know, you have to get a job. So I went to work. So now I'm taking care of brother, going to school and studying and working four days a week. So. Uh, I have some questions. You said that, um, of course, Turkey is not uh, really Islamic country, but at least we have uh, we have something for Muslim. So that that's why uh, in high school the the things is happening. What you talk, I mean, boyfriends and pregnancy and other drugs, but not so much. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, but what uh, what we wonder uh, from Turkey is that uh, high school in in which age you were? 17, 18, something like. That. Started. We do from 9 to 12, the grades, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is the, the high school. Oh. So you start when you are, I was 13. I was a little young. Most, oh. to, most people starting at 14. I was 13 and in school started September and I turned 14 in November. So I started a little bit young. I graduated at 17 years old. I was 17 and most are eight. Yeah. Even in that period, the ladies were pregnant? How many people, do you, do, can you say any Two, I knew two. One, one of my friends I knew per personally, a friend, a, 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 a friend. She got pregnant 16, and she had uh, her baby, I think twins. She ended up with two babies. There's another you said, uh, two you said. Yeah, I knew another one. I didn't know her. She wasn't a personal friend. Very young, 15, 16, same age. They were in your classroom? Um, I knew them in my circle right. in my circle of friends uh, that I knew. No, yes. you know what I wonder from uh, one class, classroom, how many, one or two? Oh, one, one, no, one. maybe in the whole school. and Because where I went to school in Redondo Beach as at that time was considered a very up I, neighborhood. Uh, and so even the kids that were not doing good things, they were not, um, they were hiding it. They were <laughs> trying to be smart about it so no one will know. Um, they they come from the it's not so much but even there it they still they were getting pregnant they were having abortions they were doing all kinds of there there was a lot of that even a uh, few, uh, few people from 100 uh, students for example I think the in the four years four years that I went to the school I know for sure I knew one two three Probably six people in my group that, that I knew who they were that were pregnant, but they don't see, in my school, they wouldn't tell people. You wouldn't know. The, the girl just would stop going to school. She would stop going. She would go home and go to teach at home. They wouldn't go to the school. 
because that school it was not okay. Now my daughter, my old, I have a big girl, she went to Carson High School. And in this school, the girls are 14, 15 years old and they're coming with the babe pregnant. They're coming to class. Of the students, we can say that. Ten persons, five persons, do you think? When I went to high school, less, less than that. Now, much more, much more. Uh, you know, of course, uh, they were living together without marriage, huh? They weren't living together. They were, they were coming to school, go to one class, then they would leave the school, go someplace, some, some park, a car, somebody's car, so, so a park, any place where they could find, and they would do this stuff, and then the girl would end up pregnant. Because the, the, they, they, now they talk a lot about education, and they, they teach now the kids a lot more, and they have now birth control for in the high schools. But when I went, phew, no. They didn't have that. There's, they, 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 the idea was if you talk about it, you're going to make them do it. If you, if, you, if you give them birth control, now they're going to go and, and have sex. This was the mentality. So th there, was no, there was no office in the school where you could go and, and get uh, something. So the girls just get pregnant. Mm -hmm. They just get pregnant they, because they're not going to tell mom and dad. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to be doing it. I mean, it's, 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 there is, there is no, no, no parents in this, in this, in this country, unless they're crazy, that are going to say, yeah, do it. <laughs> Even if they're not a religion, it's still, it's not okay. It's not okay. No, no, I'm not talking for the pregnancy. I am talking to, to be together with the, the, the boyfriend, girlfriend. Oh, everybody. Everybody, everybody. They, they father and mother, if they learn that the Every, son is sleeping with other girls. I'm going to tell you the truth. When I was in high school, if there was ten, 100 people, 100 kids, if 10, if 10 of them were not doing anything, nine wanted to. It's not because they, they didn't want to. They, every, it was so pressure. To, 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 to be having relations. Oh, there was so much pressure to do it. Pressure, for pressure from each other. The boys, uh, uh, they're going to the PE and they're playing the get sports and they're, all they're talking about is the girls, the girls, the girls, this girl, this girl, this girl. I'm with her. I'm going to be with her. He's with her. She's this one. And the girls, same thing. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, I like him. Oh, uh, Friday I'm going to his house. There's such pressure. And if, you, like I said, for me it was, it was difficult because I, I didn't, I just had a different mentality. I didn't care about that. I had so many real important problems, <laughs> not, not this stuff. <laughs> and they would ask me, oh, don't you like him? Oh, do you think he's cute? Oh, this and this. And I'm like, what? Yeah, whatever. Okay, sure. You know, and I had friends though that were boys. I had friends, good, my best friends in high school, the closest friends were boys, but I never like had that thinking like about that kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe I was strange, I guess. Everyone told me I was strange, mm. that I was weird. So working time, then you finish the so, uh, school and uh, this continued. Then the other question is uh, Islamic. Before you became a Muslim, what was your knowledge as, about Islam and converting story? But we make it in the second part. So. You finish your life story with uh, where did you work till today? Then we will come to Islamic life. Okay. Okay. Um, after high school, I, I I had to make a choice. I really wanted to go to the university and learn sound and get into theater and production and this, but I knew a lot of people that were doing this. People that were in school with me and they they um, finished before me. They were older and they finished and they came back. And they would tell us, oh, it's so difficult, we can't get work, we can't find jobs, don't do it. Don't, don't come in this profession because you're just going to suffer. And my mom was working so hard. She was working, I mean, I never saw a woman work like my, she was such a good example for me because she just worked hard. And so I wanted to help her and I wanted to do something where, because I'm still at home, I'm living at home. And I wanted to do something I can make money faster. So I don't want to go to school and leave her and my brother. And 
I don't have money, she doesn't have money, you know, it's not a, was just not a good solution. So I was always very good with hair, with fixing hair, uh, because in, in my, my hobby and the, the, the rock music and this kind of thing, it was in the late part of 1980s. And in America, we, we had a big uh, popular uh, fashion to have big, even the men, big hair, long, big, poofy, like a woman. The men looked like women in the USA for 10 years, really, I swear. They wore makeup and the big hair. I got very good at, at fixing the hair. So everyone's saying, do this. Go take your license, do be beautician. And you make money and you're good at it. So I did. So this is what I did. I went to school and did that and um, went directly to working. And um, so I just, you know, this nothing terribly exciting. But I, I did that and I... Um, well, no, one, one thing, I, I got into a, a special part of doing hair. Um, there's, there's something very popular here. It's called hair extension. It's where they add the hair to the woman to give her long, long hair. They, they take some hair and they sew it or glue it and they make a long hair. Well, I learned to do this, but I did it for like a different purpose, not, not just to make long hair. I started helping the women that had cancer or they had some sickness and they lost, they lost their hair. So I got more into the replace, replacing, helping them, they want to grow their hair back after this sickness or they have some health problem. I, I, I like specialize in helping the women that had the difficulty, they can't grow their hair. So this was my thing and for years this is what I did was this Every, all, all the things, I did the nails and the toes, all, everything, but mostly my specialty was to help these women. I always, that was it. So um, anyway, but that's basically it, just for years, you know, 15 years, uh, that was my profession, was doing the hair. You had only your office or you were working? No, I work for other people. I always worked in other salons for, for different people. Before you became a Muslim, what was your knowledge about? I, I, I uh, mix both questions because related each other, so it's not mm -hmm. necessary to ask one by one. Understand? Yeah. Uh, before you became a Muslim, what was your knowledge about Islam and how you became a Muslim? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had no. N I knew the word. I knew there was a a word Islam. I didn't have a clue. I had no knowledge. I didn't really watch TV that much. Um, I didn't have time. I didn't know anybody that was Muslim. I didn't know anything about it, good, bad, anything. Um, I was very, in a way, ignorant of the world, really, of the whole world. I didn't under, I knew there was a world, <laughs> and if something really bad was on the news, you know, I would see it. But as far as politics or, or uh, social things going on, I, I didn't know. I was just focused on go to work, take care of brother, the, 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 uh, even in high school, I didn't get into government or politics or these subjects. I, I pass the class, finish it, move on. I didn't have any concept. I didn't know anything about any religions, honestly, none. They didn't teach religion in, in, in my high school, none. They didn't teach it. So I didn't know, I just knew from what I was little, and then when I started working. This, this is what really started my whole thing with, with religion. When I would work and I would do these people's hair, a lot of these people were very sick or maybe they had cancer, they almost died and then they, now they're okay. So I was talking to women that were very religious. They had strong belief and faith and I was fascinated by that. I was like, why? I mean, uh, sometimes I would have to, you know, cover my mouth because I go, why? <laughs> why do you believe that? Why? Because I had no, no belief, really, I, none. I didn't believe, I had none. I, I, I would get so scared sometimes because I wouldn't understand, like, how, how, how can I just not be here? How do I die? I didn't understand that whole concept of how I can die. And I would get very scared. I would get, like, a panic. And I would give myself, like, a heart attack because I would be so afraid it just stops? What do you mean it just stops? I just stop? I just am not there anymore? I mean, really, it was very terrifying to me when I was young. And um, so I started really searching and asking every person, 
any any woman that came in my chair, if she I would ask, "Are you religious? Do you have a do you believe in anything? <laughs> why?" And then I would ask them why, and they were like, "What do you mean why? Why? I mean, were you born that way? Did your family raise you this way? Did something happen to you, and all of a sudden you had a moment and you believe now? Why? Why are you like that?" And all of most except for one woman in all the years, only one woman had an experience that made her have her belief. Everybody else was born this way. And so I felt like, you know what? I'm, it's never gonna happen for me. I'm gonna give up because I wasn't born into, nobody taught me when I was little. And I felt like a big, this was a big problem. And the first woman I worked for, for years, five years I worked for one woman, she was Native American. And they have a whole different, you know, idea, the spirituality. It's not like the big religions. It's very different. Um, similar in a lot of ways, but it, it's a different idea. And I was so jealous of her because she was so at peace with her life and the world. And she just had such solid belief. And, and I was like, how do you get that? I, I want that. I want to feel like that. I want my children to feel like that. I want... I want this life, I want it. And so, like I said, I would ask everybody and I would go, they would invite me. Oh, come to my church, come here. I went to every group, every church, every religious science, but I never met anyone who was Muslim, ever. So I didn't even know about it. And nobody ever talked about it. That was the other interesting thing. I never heard a bad word about it either. I never heard any word about it. So I didn't know anything. So then years, life passes, and I'm still searching and going, and I um, was divorced. I was married for f 10 years, and uh, in anyway, the long story, same man, almost 15 years. When we were divorcing, I had filed for divorce, but I was still in the house, but I... Uh, one of my girlfriends invited me to start playing this game on this website on the internet because I wouldn't leave the house. And I was, you know, big, ugly. It was not, not a good time. So finally, after months of her insisting, oh, come on, you sit in that house. You can't sit there forever. Just, you know, come on, the, play with me in the night. At least it's something you can do and introduce you to friends, whatever. And um, anyway, so um, the, the way that I found out about Islam is I met the man I'm married to now. And we met on this website that my girlfriend insisted that I join. And we met on there and we started talking. And during the first few days of our conversations, he asked me, did I know what was Islam? And I said, no, I had no idea. So he sent me a website in English. And this website, it was uh, Islam... And I'm going to remember which one. It was Islam Way. I believe it was Islam Way. And it had all these articles <coughs> and all of these, you know, links and things. And the one that caught my eye, though, was something about, and I still have it in my computer, something about um, how to be a good husband or the way to be the best husband, or something about being a husband. And I thought, oh, I got to see this, you know, come on, you know, I got to see this. So I click on it and I'm reading it and I'm like, whoa, really? And then I thought, nah, there's no way. There's no way that people, men are being taught this, that uh-uh, there's no way, there's no way. So I'm like laughing, right? And so I copied it and I email it to him and I said, have you read this? <laughs> and so next time we talk, I asked, did you get my email? He says, yes. I said, did you read it? Yeah. And I said, come on this is a joke and he goes no he goes we must I don't what what do you mean we must we must we have to be like that I was like ah oh, you're full of it you know I was just because I'm you know I'm I'm a year now trying to get divorced and I'm like from you know this horrible situation I'm like there's no way there's a, I'm in America there's no man alive that's like this oh come on and no we must we have to what do you mean you have to why you have to why? Who? What's gonna happen? You know, I I have no clue. So that started it, and then I just started going and all on my you know on my own and learning and 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 researching and everything I read. I just kept going. No, really, really, come on. You know, people, there's nobody like this. People aren't really like this. There's no. Oh, come on. You know, I just I I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe that there was really something 
that wasn't just a bunch of, pardon expression, BS. That wasn't just a bunch of, you know, this was, this wasn't just preaching, oh, you know, Adam and Eve and this and that. It wasn't just talking about history, which is what the Bible was to me. And, and it was just like, they're talking about stuff that happened. Oh, what does that have to do with my life? You know, it, don't kill anyone. Yeah, I know that. You know, it's common sense. Don't, don't the lie. Don't steal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know that too. You know, I knew, I knew all of that stuff. But, but this was different, and so I was like, wow, this is just great. And so, anyway, I got more and more involved and more and more into it. And, and then, of course, my relationship developed, and we became engaged. And, um, you know, I would ask him about things, but uh, it was a little difficult because he is a, had his own, has his own business and is very busy. He's traveling. He's doing this. He's doing that. And, you know, and then I went back to college to get a behavior degree because... My, I have twins from my first marriage, and they have autism. And autism is, you know, a very difficult disorder and requires a lot of therapy and a lot of work to make the children be able to succeed and to progress. So I just went, was determined to be able to really help my children. And there's, this is another subject, but there's a huge void of people that have the ability to really work with these kids. So while I was going to school, um, I just kept researching and doing more and more to, to learn about Islam. And um, basically, after about a year of studying on my own, I was sitting one night in August, uh, August 21st, 2009. It was 11 o'clock at night, and I was on a website and there was a little box in the corner that said, do you want to talk to somebody? So I clicked on it and it was like a little interactive thing and it, oh, do you have questions or do you, um, do you want someone to call you? And it's 11 o'clock at night. So I, I, I just said, yeah, okay, sure. You know, I want someone to call me. And um, I'm not thinking they're going to call me right now because it's 11 o'clock at night. And five minutes later, my phone rings. And it's a man on the phone. And he asked me a few questions. Well, what do you know about Islam? So I told him what I knew. And he says, uh, do you want to become Muslim? And I said, well, how do you do that? And he said, you just, you just de declare that, the, and he just told me the Shahada. And so he goes, repeat after me. And so I did. And he goes, congratulations, you're Muslim. And he hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, really? And I'm like, wow, okay all right, cool, now what do I do? And I just sat there, because I'm alone, my kids are asleep, I'm in my little apartment, and you know, uh, the, I'm like, wow, what do I do now? And so I, I email, you know, back then he was my fiance, I email him, I'm like, guess what? <laughs> I'm a Muslim, and, and, and I just I didn't know what to do. And so then, all of a sudden, they start emailing me this, this organization. I mean, I got probably 25 emails in five seconds, really with all these links and they're telling me they're gonna send me information and they're gonna send me Quran, they're gonna send me all this stuff. Well, then they sent it, but they sent it nine months later. <laughs> so I had already, <laughs> yeah, believe me, when the package came, I was shocked. <laughs> it was nine months later. But anyway, it was a good one. I have my whole little library was from them. Uh, so uh, they sent me a lot of good stuff. But anyway, so in the meantime, I sat in my apartment for a month. I didn't know what to do. And so I kept going on different websites, and then there was one website that I um, found that had uh, like a locator. It would locate places for you, like businesses that were Muslim and this and that. And so it gave me the um, location for the Islamic Center of South Bay. And so I called, and they said, oh, you want to talk to Sister Lita? And she's in charge of the, the women's group. And so... I came here, and uh, the the rest of that's all history. But um, so basically, that's that's how I became Muslim. Um, it really, you know, people always ask me, well, oh, so it's because of of, of your husband? And I said, well, yes, of course. Uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, he's the one who said, what do you know about Islam? It was, but it wasn't for him, or because he insisted, or because he. It wasn't that he did. And this is the thing when people talk about Dawa that I get a little bit. Uh, it's a little touchy subject for me because I believe, I truly believe the words of the Quran, that, that Allah guides who he will. 
And I, don't, I believe our duty is to present the message, is to, to give it in a beautiful way and to demonstrate. That's the most important thing, is to demonstrate through, through our life what it means, what is Islam. Not uh, preaching, uh, trying to convince somebody it's better or it's right or it's this or it's that, in a degree has a place, but really it's, it's when people see how you live and they see how you are and they, they see your manner and they see how you conduct yourself and they see the, the, the way your life's going, even not that it's going great or you don't have problems, but how you handle the problems. You know, uh, this is, I think, what it impresses them. And this is what, like my, my husband, when I met him, I met him two weeks before Ramadan. And I'll tell you, this is the main reason, the, truly, the reason I started researching Islam. The, the email thing, that, or the thing that on the website I read, that was, yeah, that was kind of like a joke to me at first. But two weeks after I met him was Ramadan. And every time, you know, we would talk and he would be like, I have to go, I have to go pray. What? Right now? What time is it? It's the time I have to go. Oh, okay. All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. And, and then, and, and I, I can't, um, I'm not going to get online because I have to, I mean, just so many, because during Ramadan, he, he, he was one, he does all, all of the surah, all of the things. And so, like, even in our conversation, like, he had to, he told me, you can't talk to me like this, you can't talk to me like that, because I'm fasting, and da, 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 this, and this, and we're not married, and you're not my wife, and da, da, da. I mean, all of these, and I was like, are you joking, really? You know, what? I can't put, I can't put a flower, a rose, no. And he was so, like, strict. And, and then I remember him telling me he was spending the whole night in the, in the, in the mosque praying. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? You're really going to stay all night and pray? How can you pray all night? What do you, come on. No, really. And I'm like, the next day when I talked to him, I said, did you really stay in there all night? He said, alhamdulillah, la, la, la. And I'm like, Scott, really? Come on, you're joking. You're just telling me, no, Really? Oh, I feel so good. I'm so, oh, you don't know what it's like. And you have, oh, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, really? I never met anybody ever that practiced what they preached. And he didn't really preach a lot. He just did it. And I was like, wow, this has got to be something really great. You know, I mean, this guy, because he's younger than me. And I'm like, wow, he's younger. And he's, you know, and he's, you know, he's, he's in Morocco, which is, you know, is a kind of a, a different place if you've ever been there. You know, I mean, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not like going, some, some countries you go to and that's very strict and everybody's, you know, in the black. And Morocco, the guys are in the pointy toe shoes and the tight jeans and the sunglasses. And the girls are, some of them have the scarf, but they're in the tight little clothes and they got the heels and the makeup, what? And, you know, and the bling bling and all of this. It's, it's a little different over there. So I was like, nah, this guy's, but he, he was serious. And so that's what really made me think, okay, there's got to be something to this. If some young guy who's, you know, living in this hip, cool place, and, you know, because I'd never been there. I thought it was hip and cool. It seemed like it, you know. And um, I, I just, there's got to be something to it. And, yeah, there was something to it. <laughs> there was something to it. And that's this, yeah. And it, I'll never forget the first time that I opened the English version of, of the Quran because I had no idea what to expect because I had seen ayahs and surahs, you know, quoted and, and quoted on things and stuff. So it's just like, you know, the Bible's like that, you know, they have quotes and stuff. But when you read it, when you actually read it, it's more like you're having a conversation. Like when you sit down with a really good friend that you know really well, like, and you can just be really honest and you can really talk and you have that great flow between that person. That's what I felt like when I was reading it. And I would even like, uh, the first time, the very first time, there was even times when I would read something and I would kind of laugh because I was like, you're right, yes, exactly. Like, um, why? There, there's, in, in Surah Baqarah, there's many times when, when, when Allah's asking, like, you know, I show them this and I, I, I give them the guidance, why they don't want to follow it. I mean, I'm very loose, I, I don't have it memorized, the exact words, but the questions were being asked, like, what's... Basically, in, in very straight English, what's wrong with people that they don't listen? 
You know, they don't listen. How many times they have to be told? How many different ways? How many different examples? How many prophets do I have to send? How many things have to happen for people to like pay attention and to, to understand? And I was just like, I remember sitting alone in my apartment and just like laughing, going, yes, exactly right. And then I go, whoa, look at that. <laughs> who am I talking to? I'm crazy. You know? But it was like that. It was not like the Bible when you read it, you're like, oh, you can't understand it, first of all. It doesn't make any sense. And in this chapter, it contradicts what you just learned in the last one. And, you know, it was frustrating. But with this, it was just like, it was like a conversation. And that's what I explain to people. I, when I read, and I know it's different when you read it in Arabic. It's very different. It's, it, 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 I mean, just listening to it in Arabic is very different. But for me, it w- I don't see any complication. I don't see anything confusing. Uh, I thought this is the most straightforward, most simple. And you're given so many examples of what is being said. The message is presented in every possible way. So even no matter what background you come from, no matter what your life experience is, no matter what your education is, no matter what your, even your comprehension of, of the world is, you can get it. A five-year-old can get it. It's that easy. Well, I, at that point in my life, I, I had a very small social circle, my, my just a very few close friends. Um, my very best friend at that time, female my best friend, um, she actually happened to be married to, it's, it's an interesting story, but just briefly, her husband um, is from Morocco, and he's Muslim. She's Catholic, but he's Muslim, and we actually went together to Morocco the very first time when she met her husband the first time and when I met my, my husband now the first time. We traveled together. And it was just a coincidence. I mean, the two men didn't know each other, and we had no idea that either one of us had met. It was just a weird thing. But anyway, so she um, had, he was here. She, her husband came here years ago, a couple years ago. And so um, she, and she'd had a lot of um, people, she knew a lot of people that were Muslim. So for her, it wasn't a big deal. Um, you know, she wasn't. It didn't really make any difference, you know, in, in our relationship. Um, my mother, I had been talking to her about it since day one, you know, telling her, hey, guess what? I'm checking this out. I'm, you know, this is what I learned. And did you know this? And did you know that? And so I'd been kind of, you know, she she knew what I was into and what was going on in it. And again, it wasn't, you know, my mom was kind of, her attitude was, well, if it's helping you. You know, because I'd been through a really, it was a really difficult divorce. It was a really very, very unpleasant and bad time. And so she was like, anything that helps you, that makes you feel good, I'm, I'm all for it. You know, so she, she just, you know, didn't really, the only, <laughs> the only thing she had an issue with was when I started covering my hair. She got a little upset about that because... She's like, why do you want to look like a little old lady? She's like, you're young, you're beautiful. What do you want to do that for? You know, she just, she didn't really get it. You know, she didn't. And the, but, but the interesting thing is, is, is that I'll never forget. We were leaving. She was here. She came to visit last, I think it was last year. And we were going somewhere. And I think I actually had on what I have on today. And we were walking out to go to the store or somewhere. And she was behind me. And she goes, you know. I have to say something. And I turn around and go, here, here goes. She's going to say something bad because, you know, she hate, she, she'd always make comments when I would wear a scarf. And so I turn around and I go, okay, I'm waiting for it. She goes, you know, as much as I don't like it, I have to say that you just glow when you have that on your head. You just glow. You just, you, you know, and I'm like, oh, well, thank you. I feel very happy. <laughs> I mean, this is why I glow. I don't know, <laughs> but it was so it was nice. So, so I haven't had really any problems. Um, I get teased a little bit. Uh, I got a twenty-year-old daughter that likes to she teases me a little bit, you know, about what I wear sometimes. And um, I, I don't know. I, I haven't had any real bad thing except, and, th- and this, I don't even know for sure if it's. Oh, I do know. I, I had a little bit of bad experiences with uh, my children's school that they go to. Um, they've been going there for a couple of years, and the first year that they went there, I wasn't covering my hair. 
Um, and then when I put, it seemed like, it, I didn't want to think that as soon as I put a scarf on my head that they changed, but my oldest daughter said absolutely that's when everything changed. And their whole attitude towards me and helping me with my kids, it all changed. And I became like, they started looking at me like I'm bad and they started giving me a hard time with everything. And it, it just was a total different, per, di, everything changed. And uh, anyway, it's okay though. But um, th th that and where I lived, I started, with, the reason we moved is because I, w I got targeted by gang, the actual, like a gang gang, a street gang, down the street. Uh, they decided they didn't like me and they followed me home one time and um, they were on foot because they lived down the street. So I, was, I got out of my car before they got to my car and I was getting ready to go back down and get the things out of the car and before I could do that, my neighbor pulled in next to me and they robbed him. And he said they were waiting at my car when he pulled in. It just so happened he pulled in, so they, you know, pulled the gun on him. And then they came back and they busted into my car and they didn't take anything. So it was just, this was just a, a hate crime. They busted into my car. They just trashed it. They, um, you know, threw everything around, made a big mess, broke the window, this kind of thing. So I, I moved. And that's when I moved here. This just happened a few months ago. So I moved here and you know, alhamdulillah, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to be here anyway. <laughs> so it was just the, the push to get out of that place. But that, that's really, you know, and that, that kind of stuff, it happens, you know. It happens regardless of, you know, any specific thing. It could be because you're the wrong color or you're in the wrong neighborhood or whatever. But um, that's really the only thing, negative especially. But the, everyone else, my friends, the covering my head is the only thing really that anyone's ever got. It's so strange. That's the only thing anyone cares, really seems to care about or have a, a concern with. Things time all the things are beautiful. But which one of the ideas, which ideas mostly impressed you? Even you can have think. If you want to think, I stop the camera, then you think. No, I actually can answer that. There's, there's, a, there's, it's more than one thing though. I mean, I, I can't say just one specific yeah. thing. There's more than one. The, the first initial thing that impressed me so much was that it was an all inclusive lifestyle. It wasn't just like the other religions. It, it was a way of life. It wasn't just, it's a spiritual, it's physical, it's, it's, it's on every, every level and the more i've the more because I, I i consider myself a student i like to study and i'm really studying um right now i anyway so so the thing the thing with me is uh, that impressed me so much is that it's it's all inclusive it's it's every way every part of your life and the biggest the most important thing i think for me was that I didn't see, in, and even after I finally got my English version of the Quran, and in all my classes, and in everything that I've learned, there's no, you don't find in Islam this, the real Islam. Now there's extremists that, that have a different opinion, which I, I, I'm not going to talk about that. But in the real, in the Quran, and, and in the real Islam, there isn't this hard, cold, brutal, like you must or you da da da, which all the other religions, I never understood that. I never understood that that that, you know, it was so like, it, it didn't seem like anything from a god or from a divine being. It seemed more like someone wrote a book to tell people what to do. With Islam, it's like no, this is a guide. This is the way. This is the. This is the suggestion. This is what you should do. If you want a good life, if you want this to happen, if you want to end up in heaven, if you want to avoid, th this is how to do it. The, it it's, it's the way, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I said, it's like your best friend telling you, look, this is really, if you want things to go good in your life, you know, this is the way to do it, do, like this. And, 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 oh, you don't understand? Here, I'm going to tell you again. Uh, okay, you didn't understand? Okay, let me give you another. This is how you can do it. it it's so, like, it's, 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 it's done in such a loving way. And it's not just loving. It, it, I don't even know. There's not a word. According to you, what's the problems that we have to solve in the world? Well, 
I have this answer too. I, this is my opinion, just my opinion. But from what I've seen, is there is there's th it's like a couple different things, but it all ties together. There are a lot of people. There's two groups of people, Muslim people in the USA. There's the people here that are following Islam, the practicing and whatever level they practice the following Islam. There's these Muslim people and then there are people that when you ask them they say they're Muslim but they don't have any connection to the to the religion. It's just well I'm from here I'm Muslim. I'm from that I'm Muslim. And the problem with both of the, the, first, the second group the problem with them is that they're just doing whatever and they're saying they're Muslim so anybody that knows them is like oh really you know and this is their example and this is what they see and they think oh wow that's that really you do that's Islam that's what that means oh you know and it and it gives a very poor impression I mean it, it, it confuses people and it may even just do like really b can be bad very negative and and so for those people uh, I, whenever I, I, I meet them all the time uh, oh, you Muslim? Oh, I'm Muslim too. Really? Oh, okay. And then I'll invite them to come here or whatever the situation is. I start try to talk a little bit, and then I realize immediately oh, they don't follow Islam. They they're saying they're Muslim. And uh, for example, this the, I I belong to a lot of different Islamic um, sites and groups and and Dawa projects, and I I'm doing a lot of this kind of stuff. And a lot of it is through the internet. And I met a. Uh, 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 a person, a, a, a brother on there, and he says, you know, I say, oh, are you a Muslim? And he says, yes, I'm Muslim. And he says, I'm half Muslim. And I went, half? And, and at first I just thought, okay, I'm not going to even talk to this person because this is stupid. But then I thought, no, wait, I got to know. What half of you is Muslim? And then he goes, oh, well, no, I don't mean like, like half. I just mean that I was, I'm born here, but I don't follow Islam. I said, so you're not Muslim. But Muslim is not an ethnicity, it's a faith, it's a belief system. So that's a problem. Then the other, the biggest problem, though, the bigger problem is for the people that really are practicing Islam and they're, you know, doing what they do and they're, they're you know, um, the, the, the thing is that uh, m uh, many, 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 not all, but many of the Muslims that live in America, they don't, they don't, they don't ec extend in any way beyond their immediate little realm, their immediate circle. In other words, you know, they come to the mosque, they pray, they do, you know, they, they go to the market, they buy halal food, they do, you know, they're doing what they're supposed to do. But when they go out in the street, they don't look at anybody. They don't smile. They, if you see the, them in the market, and, and I talk to the sisters all the time because I feel the sisters are the wor the sisters. I love you all. Don't get me wrong, but that they that that the big burden falls on the sisters when it's in public because we are easily identifiable. Men, you can't tell. You don't know who unless he's in a. Well, I don't know what those things are called. Uh, the women, they're called like a jaleba or something. I don't know what they call for the men. But unless they have a cap and they have the long dress on, and even then they think they're Jewish or something, they still don't know they're Muslim. For the men, th they, it, nobody knows, unless you have a sign and you're carrying a sign. But for the sisters, you got a flag. You got a flag, okay? Everybody knows. So when you're walking in the market or you're in the mall or you're at the gas station or you're at the red light and you got that face, that like sour expression and the down and you don't smile at anybody and you, you know, and you're just like this. Whew. I mean, it puts such, I mean, everybody who's ever heard terrorist sees that. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter how pretty your scarf is. If they see that face, this is what they put together. This is Islam. That's, yes, there is one right there. And I'll tell you the truth. This is the reason I started covering my hair. Because I wanted them to see a different face. I wanted them to see a different face. And somewhere I read, I don't know who, who read it or, or, or where I read it. I, I can't remember, but it stuck with me. And I, every time I get dressed, every day I hear it in my head. When you leave your house, you want to be known and not known. Known for your character, for who you are, for your manner, and not known that you're not hanging out of your clothes and everyone can see you know, and all this. So I think about that every day and everyone's like, well, you know, oh, I don't cover my hair because I don't want people, you know, they're going to think this or they're going to think that. Well, I want them to think it and I want them to ask me. I want them to ask me. Ask me about it and then I'm going to tell you. 
You know, I had some guy come up to me in the market and go, do you eat meat? Just like that. He goes, are you a Muslim? With this real ha weird accent. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, do you eat meat? I said, all the time, <laughs> whenever I can get it, you know. <laughs> yeah, medium rare too, you know, I mean. And so I like that. I mean, I like that. But the biggest problem is that so many, and, and, and uh, Sheikha Marj from Mercy for Mankind just came two weeks ago and did a big Dawah thing program for us. And he's, he said the same thing, we, we agree on this, that uh, most people don't, they, they, just, they just go through their life. They, they don't even have, they're complacent. They're just complacent. You know, okay, this is all I have to do. I just have to be a good person. I just have to follow the rules. I just have to pray. I just have to make dua. I just have to do these things and everything's okay. This is it. Take care of my kids. This is it. But really, our, our purpose is a little bigger than that. You know, we're, we're created for a reason and we're created to worship. And part of that worship is, is not to go preach to people or to insist, but to, 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 um, to demonstrate and to, and to, inshallah, to guide people too in that process. And, you know, it, you can't guide anybody if you don't open your mouth, if you don't, if you don't smile, at least a smile. I mean, smile is, is the easiest thing in the world to do. It's, it's sunnah, it's charity, it's, it's simple. You just eat and do it. And yeah, you get a wrinkle, so what? But that's it. And, and yeah, so now, now uh, everyone that comes through the door, we you know we we push we we, we kind of push that on our on our group of sisters. Like you know, be aware when you're at that red light and you're sitting there scowling because you're late, and someone looks over at you, they see the scarf on your head. Don't don't <clears throat> like give them that face. Just smile, you know, or wave at them or let them go before you. You know, Sh let them go before you. Really, is it going to make a difference? You know, you do you have to block them so they can't come out of the. The, the light's only, yeah, I understand the light's only green for two seconds and then you got to wait five minutes again for it to be green again. But let, just let them go, you know, let them go because you know what, they're going to remember that. They're going to remember, you know, when someone's talking bad about, about Islam, that they're going to go, you know, I met a lady in the store and she let me go in front of her and, you know, uh, she was so nice and da, 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 da. And I think she was one of those Muslims. She had that thing on her head. And, but even though they're talking like that, they're going to, they're going to have a good impression. And, and this is how you make good relationships, no matter what your, your religion is. If you want to make friends with your neighbors, that, that's how you do it. And, you know, it doesn't matter where you're from. I mean, that's, it's, I don't know. I mean, we're ambassadors. We're ambassadors. We are the ambassadors. And until people realize that, that's the problem. No, nobody knows. Half of America does not know anything about Islam. And the other half that does know knows just what they see on TV. And of the ones that know stuff from the TV, maybe a very small percent actually know people that are Muslim. And then again, then, the, and then who is the Muslim that they know? That's the other thing. So those of us that are, we got to do something, you know, we have to do something. We don't need to go preach on the corner, but, you know, we need to, when we leave our driveway and, and the neighbors out there watering, we need, hey, how are you? Lawn's looking good. Anything, you know, just any small little gesture. And that, that to me is the biggest problem. Not, I mean, the terrorism, the news, all this stuff. If every single person, every single Muslim person made a, just a small little extended, just, just reach just a little bit, not, not go save the world, just make a friend with your neighbor, take them their paper. Um, you know, if it's trash day and you see their cans there, they forgot it and the truck's coming, go push the trash can out on the sidewalk for them. You know, do, you see they're going to get a ticket, it's a street sweeper, go knock on their door, say, hurry, come move your car. I mean... Just any little small thing, extend yourself, be a good Muslim, be what you're supposed to be, help, do what you're supposed to do. Don't just sit in your little world because you fixed it and, and, and just think you're okay. That's not enough. That's not enough. And you know, when we, when we all start realizing that, I mean, the, it, things will change. I mean, they are changing, you know, alhamdulillah, they're changing, but it takes more. It takes more. It takes, uh, you know, anyway, so that, that's what I think is the problem. Yeah, you touch uh, you touch on a very good point. That that's useful uh, point. That some people must understand this very well. As you said, they are ambassador. Uh, there is uh, how about spreading of Islam? How it must be? Which kind of ways do you advise to the Muslims to spread Islam? Do you have any example? Already something something like uh, you 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 expressed 
before question this. But if you want to include some, but you know, uh, yeah, some some you said because they should be uh, kind, uh, smile. The people must like them. Uh, what else do you do? Advice to speed Islam to other Americans or to speed all over the world? Okay. Well, I, I definitely know what is not a good idea. What I, in my opinion, what is not a good idea is to on the internet, and he is asking Muslims to send emails and write letters to try to convince a movie star to convert to Islam, to, 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 to convince him, to push him, because he's interested in it, and he wants them, to, and, and I keep thinking there's no compulsion in religion, there's no compulsion in religion, there's no compulsion in religion, you're not supposed to push, you're not supposed to, you, and I'm reading what the comments that, that the people are putting, and I'm like, oh, why are you saying that? And they're like, oh, it's the right way, it's the best way, you need to do it, you, you don't want to go to the hellfire, and, and it's like, no, but this is not Islam, this is not, I mean, it's not my understanding. Maybe it's some, uh, clearly it's somebody's understanding, but my understanding is, it, you, I mean, you can sit and you can tell them, yes, okay, you're going to go to the hellfire, you're an unbeliever, da, da, da. You, okay, but this is not to me a way to show someone that 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 this that it's a good light i mean like i said you you have to demonstrate it you have to lead by example i i believe that so firmly you have to lead by example and and the biggest thing in islam i, I have to say the biggest thing that i've that, that that not biggest okay it's not biggest big it's big humility okay humility and and being humble being humble and humble isn't just like oh thank you being humble is, is a whole way of conducting yourself in everything in your life. And, and I have to remind myself of that all the time because I get caught up too. I get caught up. I go to the sisters group and they're all in the pretty scarves and, you know, like this one and the bling bling like this. And they're all decorated and they, they look like flowing Egypt, princesses of Egypt or something. They look f stunning. And I'm thinking, well, that's not really humility and that's not really being modest. You're, you know, and I do the same thing. I have beautiful flowing caftans that I made myself that are just stunning and, and, and all the scarves and I've got caught up in it too. But the really, if you, if you really look at the meat, at the core of the message in the Quran and, and how we're supposed to be the snot, yes, we, you know, we should be clean. We should have nice things. We should be, but we shouldn't be out in the street calling attention to us. We're not supposed to call, we're supposed to be humble. We're supposed to be modest. And even though you're covered from here to here, if, if everything you have on your body is making people stare at you and go, wow, look at her, that is in modesty. That's not modesty, and that's definitely not humility. And, you know, it's, and, and you know, when you have gold everywhere and all that, you're showing off. This is showing off. You are putting in the face of somebody that you have what they don't have. The lady in the, in the rags doesn't have the fine silk, you know, and it's nice. It's okay to have that, especially to go pray. I understand that. You know, you go pray, you want to put on your best clothes. You want to look, you know, this is fine. But I'm just, I'm talking about on a daily basis. The people that get so caught up, and there's ayahs in the Quran about this too, and I'm, inshallah someday I will have them committed to memory where I can just recite them perfectly, but not yet. Um, but there are ayahs about that too, about, about, you know, coveting and about collecting and gathering, um, you know, material things, and, and, and yes, to an extent we're supposed to do that, but why? Why are we supposed to get wealth? Why are we supposed to get wealth? So that we can help people. The purpose for us getting money and getting things is to help people that don't have it. It's not for us to sit in our beautiful house with our six cars and our diamond this big. This is not why Allah gives us wealth. Allah gives us wealth, it's a test, but also, it's, it's it to share it, inshallah. We're supposed to share it. We're supposed to help the less fortunate. And then and it says in the Quran, the more you give, then Allah's going to reward you. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful cycle. But, you know, that, that, that gets lost sometimes. It gets lost. Uh, this was the last question. If you want to include something, include. My question is finished. No, I don't think so. Do you want to say something to Turkish people for Holy Ramadan? 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Do, do, do you want to say something uh, to Turkish audience about Holy Ramadan? Because it's possible this will broadcast in Ramadan. Actually, I do have something to say, not just to, to Turkish people. I have something to say to people that live in a Muslim country. That I've been to Morocco six times, and it is so amazing to me. So the uh, people that live where they have, so we have Islamic centers, and we do have some places here that are like a like a masjid. But you can't sit in your house and hear and hear the the call for prayer and and and, and hear the the adhan. You can't hear it when you're in Morocco. When you're in, I don't know about it in in, in Turkey, but when you live somewhere where you the, you can hear that and 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 you, you know i don't know there's something beautiful about that to me and the, the ability to be able to walk down the street uh, you know with your scarf on and and you and it's accept, accepted and no one stares at you funny and that you can pray you can stop in the middle of your work and and drop down and pray and nobody's going to think anything weird of you that is such a blessing. That is such a, 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 a not a privilege, I mean, it's your right, but people are so blessed that are in these places. And, and I know they look at America and they think, oh, you know, they're so lucky there. But, but to me, I would rather live in Morocco in, in a shack and be able to hear that and, go, and, and pray and be able to just be free and, and, and worship how I want. And I mean, I see pictures in countries where I see trucks, the pictures of trucks pulled over on the side of the road and the person's on the side of the road praying. And I get, I get tears. I get tears when I see that. Because that's like beautiful to me, to just be able to do that, to have that, that kind of freedom. And we, we have it here to a point, but it's not like that. And they're, they're blessed and they're fortunate. And when they look at people driving Mercedes and they look at people over here with the big houses, don't forget what's important. What is really important? You know, to me, to be able to, to worship how you want and to be comfortable, too, in, in the whole thing, is it's, it's a blessing and it's a privilege. And it's, to me, better and more important than any house and any car and, and any thing that you could have. And, I mean, basically that would be it. Don't, don't, uh, don't be, don't think it's better because... Uh, I hear so much, oh, America is so great, America is so great. America is great, but I would go there in 10 seconds and, and raise my chickens on the roof and, and, and wash my clothes in the sink and do all of that. I would, just to be able to, to walk to the masjid five times a day because it's right there and I can hear it. And I, I just, I don't know. I don't know, there's something about that. It's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's just such a blessing.